morning, everyone. Uh, we won't waste much time in the introduction. We are running behind schedule. Uh, well, when uh, Karan asked me that uh, we want you to chair the debate, I uh, thought that, yes, I'm quite of that, uh, you know, uh, I'm a liberal, so very balanced. Maybe that's what, that was the thought behind. Uh, and uh, to take some tips from uh, Anu, I, because he's a veteran in this, uh, in conducting debates, so I asked him that, what do think I should do? And Anup said, just ensure there are punches. Now, I don't really know what he meant by that, but I have two lawyers here. So whoever is punched or is about to punch, please take care of yourselves. I'll try to balance it out. So the topic is really very uh, interesting. Uh, between... Uh, public relations and public affairs. I have to be very, very neutral as a chair. I'm keeping my opinion reserved. Only thing is that I just realized uh, one of our panelists, uh, something unfortunate happened, so he could not attend Rajiv, um, and we needed a speaker. So I ran around with my PR and PA skills and I got one speaker, very appropriate, who deals with public affairs, and uh, which is Rahul. So I somehow I realized that both are really, really important for the success of any work. Uh, the topic today is public relation versus public affairs and what drives better communication results. Now we have uh, Sunita. Tabriz and Rahul, who would speak for public affairs and for public relations. Suveer is there, Aman. Uh, okay, so I am, uh, two Amans are there. So one is Aman and one is Aman. That's what I uh, was trained to do. So they are there, all very, very experienced from the industry in both the, uh, you know, verticals. So I would like to open the, op open the debate. And uh, first, coming to Sunita. To, uh, yes, uh, you want the public relation? Okay, fine, yeah. Okay, done, 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 I got it. So first we will start with public relations and uh, I request Aman to please open the debate on this topic. Okay. Aman, I said, not Aman. <laughs> okay, uh, interesting one. I think, uh, let me set the ball rolling uh, with saying this that uh, affairs are short-lived, relationships are long-lasting. I think uh, I will let my other panelists to kind of uh, move forward. I think that's what, let me begin this debate with. Affairs are dynamic. Relations can be lazy. Okay. Suveer? Yeah, thanks. Uh, good evening to you all. You know, uh, all fair disclosure, I run a firm that has both services, which is public affairs as well as public relations. However, as a good spokesperson, uh, speaking for public relations, I'm going to fight really hard uh, to say why public relations today uh, drives a lot of what we do in communication, uh, whether it's uh, you know uh, building influence, persuasion, brands, uh, whether it's crisis issues management, or it's just about reach and engagement. So, yeah, I'm going to speak for public relations today. I do want to make people understand a little, small little thing about why we're here as communicators. Uh, one of the key things that we do in public relations is not just editorial relations. So that's the first point that I'd really like to clear about. It's not about, you know, exposures, square centimeters, and so and so forth. I think what people fail sometimes to understand is the role that we play in engaging with not just stakeholders important to a business, but also the general public. When you want to drive an agenda that has, let's say, or a USP that has a product behind it, uh, it's very important to understand the audiences you want to influence or persuade. I think that's the first point that you need to understand, is that who's your audience? What's the insight around an audience? And then find innovative ways to communicate, to engage with this audience, to be able to either influence or persuade them. Uh, it's, a vet, it's a lot more broad-based than what, let's say, a public affairs uh, person would want from uh, their agenda. Uh, it'd be very interesting to hear what some of my other panelists on the other side would have to say about it. Uh, but I just feel that public relations is a lot more broad-based. 
And like my esteemed panelist to my left just said, affairs could be short-lived, relationships are built forever. So I'll leave it at that and uh, hand it over back to Aman, who would perhaps like to say something. Uh, yeah, we would uh, just come to Sunita and then come to you. Sunita, your open remarks? Okay. Um, so I don't have an agency, but I have straddled both corporate communications and corporate affairs. And um, it will be unfair to say which is harder or which is better or whatever, but I would, I would like to establish one thing is that, you know, as I transitioned, I realized that public affairs is so much more complex, so much more complex, and it has, it doesn't give you instant gratification, right? It's a, it has a very long haul, it's a, it's a very slow burn, but when the key KPIs come into action or when you, sh when you see your success metrics, it's a wow thing, you know, it's, it's, it's very business focused, you are probably turning a legislation around, you're influencing a policy in the favor of um, the organization, whatever it is, you are making a huge impact, not just for the organization, but for the sector and the industry as well. So that's something that I learned. And then, um, and then it's, it's about measurement, you know, you cannot measure. And as I said, key KPIs come over a period of time. And the other one was about um, influencing businesses back, you know, it's, it's one thing to go and meet uh, stakeholders outside and it's so hard because they are all experts and you need to have a very high level of sophistication to engage with them. So that was the third learning for me. Even coming back inside, just getting the outside in perspective and making the, and giving solutions to the business was another thing. So, so to me, I think from corporate communications to public affairs, it's been a long journey, but um, I now vouch for public affairs all the way because it's harder, it's complex, but it's very interesting, very engaging, and very challenging, and I love that. Yeah. No instant gratification. Yes, Aman, what do you have to say as your opening remark? Yeah, so in fact, um, you said that there should be some punches. Um, I think I have not heard anybody uh, in public affairs driving communication results. I think that is all driven by public relations only. And uh, when it comes to public relations, it is public. So you have all kinds of audiences encompassed into this discipline, including policy makers who you are trying to impress through editorials or through other means. Uh, thirdly, very often when public affairs work, they need PR support, but that in most of the cases is not true the other way around. So these are the short three points that I wanted to make. Okay. So we heard from both of them. Now, uh, coming to uh, our question where we would like both the sides to respond. Sunita. Yes, yeah. please. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> respond to what I said. Yeah. Okay. So, so to Aman, uh, uh, he said, uh, I did both public affairs, communication, everything. So I have a rebuttal. Uh, but before I go there, uh, let me tell you what's my career journey. Uh, lawyer, never practiced, went for business, in four years reached national sales manager. And I was aspiring by fifth, sixth year, I should be CEO of a company. And then I met somebody uh, called Dr. Amit Mitra. Uh, uh, everybody knows Amit Mitra. And, and he told me, why don't you join Fiki and do work on policy. I said, boss, I don't understand this. I'm good. He said, and when I, he invited me, there, is, there was somebody, multinational CEO, who was waiting outside. So I went in and he said, boss, there is somebody waiting, not to name. Why he's waiting outside? You are talking to me. He said, that person is waiting because if I don't help him, government will levy 3,000 crore tax on him, his job is gone, company is gone. So I want to in influence you, whatever you are doing, this job is better. And he was only talking narrow public policy. And that got interested and I joined Fiki. From there, I moved on to different sectors. So if I'm talking about healthcare, tobacco, alcohol, and agri, if you're not public affairs, you don't have seat in boardroom you don't have CEO listening to you. So that's sectoral. If you are looking at emerging markets where institutions are weak, all your public 
affairs work either makes your company survive or go bust. It's much beyond public relation. Public relation is a tiny part of it. That's okay. my. We, 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 we come to the PR. I just want people. to take a step back. You don't get a seat in the boardroom and you're very tiny. How do you respond? Who, who, who would like to? Who would like to? Aman, a fair a two minute we, noodles we, which you talked about. Let Aman, I'll start I with Aman. Just one thing. Yeah, okay, Aman. Aman. Start. I'll, I'll give you one example from somebody who's sitting in the audience. Uh, Paroma is sitting. I think she had a seat in the management committee when she was working with Google. So, public relations <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so, public is relations is Parma not tiny. A, we have a seat. It's, it's, a, it's taking Parma a surprise completely. Me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Let Aman continue. Exactly. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. So, you have proved your point, yeah, yeah. right? So, I, I gave one example. Somebody okay. who is sitting here. Okay. Uh, uh, coming to the public affairs team. Uh, it is said that public relations... Can I just say one thing, I think, yes. before, sorry to interrupt. Who, who, think, uh, who's this rebuttal for? Bama? This is for... <laughs> for all of them. What has been oh, said. Great. I think ah. there is some misnomer. Uh, and to my ex-boss twice, <laughs> Aman. Uh, so I have an opportunity to rebut him today. Don't look uh, at him when you are speaking. Public affairs. Uh, we are taking a very macro view to things. It's important we take a step back and understand what is public affairs. Public affairs, I just noted it down. Public affairs is work, a combination of government relations, media communication, issue management, C CSR and uh, corporate relationship, information uh, circulation, strategic communication, advisory, and all that, including lobbying not allowed in India. So when we are saying one is better than the other, uh, let's take a step back and get a reality check. What is public affairs and what is public relations? Public uh, relations, I believe, is a subset of public affairs. Uh, and uh, public affairs is far more strategic, requires integration of all the things seamlessly. That's it. Uh, no, now, now I'll, I'll first go to Aman. Aman, he already has a laundry list. Do you have one? You know, I think... Uh, relationships don't start with laundry lists. I'll just say that. And uh, I think uh, when we talk about public affairs, you know, we talk about lobbying. I think it all starts with relationship. I'll okay, it. so lobbying and relationship. Now, Can I PR uh, is more of image management and public affairs prioritizes special interest, quote unquote, over public good. Agree? Why? Tabrez. No, let I'll come go. to Sunita then. Okay, then let Sunita. Sunita address this. Yeah, before that, I want to take, you know, say something in, in response to what Aman said Aman about say. communication. So I firmly believe that public relations, in my experience, is a lot about push communications, whereas in public affairs, it's pull communications. What I mean is you're pushing a company's um, narrative, story, you're building a brand, etc. And it's very consumer-centric. Whereas in public affairs, it's all about pull, right? You're trying to get the attention of stakeholders who's, who are anyways experts in their own way. And you have to get to that level of sophistication, of knowledge and expertise to get their attention to what you want to change or what is your interest, right? So I think communication happens either ways. Ma'am, so I, I want, want to say. disagree here. Uh, you know, PR is all pull. It's not push. Uh, good PR is pull. Uh, what does a company want? Reputation uh, management. What does a PR do? Reputation custodian. Building up an image, sustaining it, reputation is all, all, I mean, everyone wants that, it is said. So, does public affairs do that? How do you, uh, you know, really look after the uh, image or reputation of an organization? So, uh, to your question to answer, I thought uh, uh, Rahul wants to intervene. So. When we look at public affairs, definitely today, uh, it's much wider. Uh, much wider in the sense, if your company is engaging with external stakeholder, whether government, media, whatever, citizen, consumer groups, aggressive NGO, whoever you are talking, you need to uh, be perceived as doing good. If you are not, uh, you are in trouble. And, uh, and the quantum of reaction is so high 
that uh, whatever you do as firefight will be not effective. So you have to be proactively for public, for citizen, for future, for everything, okay? Uh, uh, and this is with more regulation coming and in the age of, uh, in a, a bit of fast forward, uh, what's coming, uh, it will only intensify the problem. I will not go in detail, let's hold on for the debate. Back to you. Okay. Uh, now, when we talk about business growth, because for any uh, business, PNL is very important. So, I leave it to both the sides for their points. When we talk about business growth, who contributes better and how? I'll come to PR team first. Sorry. So, I'll take this on. Okay, so we take uh, You know, business growth is aligned on two, 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 two things, if you would ask me. Uh, one is intent and the other is action, right? Uh, all businesses have good intent at the end of the day, right? Uh, they want to fairly engage, uh, they want to create a fair marketplace, uh, they want to fight competitively, uh, stand out in an over-informed, cluttered environment. All of these things happen. Uh, the intent is there. But really translating intent into action is going to be the key. So even if I go in and I build messaging strategies today, I mean, we live in a very, uh, you know, it, the audience is not stupid. The audience can see through what is being fluff and what is really being acted upon. So there's no point going in there and saying something which has zero action behind it. You get caught out really quick. And as reputation management consultants, anybody would go in with the advice of saying, first do and then talk later, right? So if you were to ask me in terms of how does business growth happen or who has the impact on business growth, as a reputation management consultant, you need to assess what a company is doing to be able to say what they need to say, right? And that's what a public relations executive would sit in a room or in a boardroom, for that matter of fact, and advise upon, saying that if you were to translate this action into words, phrases, visual narratives, this is how it needs to be done. If you want to engage these audiences in a meaningf meaningful manner, this is how it needs to be done, whether it's online, offline, and all the other various platforms that you have. But the point that I'm trying to drive through this is, anything that you want to say has to be rooted in action, right? So a company, irrespective of what their narrative is, needs to be able to define that narrative by what they do. And if I can stand in a boardroom and tell anybody in terms of, you know, what is the narrative that you have delivered after a campaign, it's very easily measurable to tell them the difference it has made, whether it is on reputation, whether it is on perception, whether it is on sentiment. And all of these things add up to everything that my public affairs team does. Because if they were to walk into a, a government office, the first thing that is assessed is who are they even before they are allowed into the door of that room. And that's the reputation that you carry by the very communication that you have or the very perception that you have amongst the various stakeholders that you engage with, whether it's in a manufacturing facility or in an industry forum or with, you know, academia or research organizations, whoever it may be. With that being said, business growth is driven by intent and action being married together. And as communicators, what we do really good at is the ability to bring that message to the audiences that who matter to the business. Thank and you, And that's Sabir. how the growth is driven. Thank you, Sabir. Grow. Intent and marriage. Intent Sorry. and uh, action. action. The intent, how, how do you get the marriage? So there are three parts to this. First is, what is for what? You, when you start a business, you are in the early phase, you want to sell, hardcore sell. Then you grow, you have to package and market, where marketing a public relations come into the picture. When you've evolved, you need public affairs to actually support and help you manage and navigate the complexities as they emerge. Uh, as a part of the life of a business. Uh, it could be taxation, it could be policy, it could be adversity, it could be international trade, whatever aspects. Second is uh, intent. The intent for everybody is aligned to the what stage of business that an organization is, and it needs to be adapted. The stakeholders was mentioned. Stakeholder engagement, it is very fancily used in PR, but it's not the case, I think, I'm sorry, but public affairs is what is actually intended to cater to different stakeholders the messaging communication aspects, each has to be targeted. Uh, if I am uh, reaching out to the regulators, the governments, the messaging, the co approach is different. Uh, the intent there is very clearly defined. Uh, if I am reaching out to the, uh, for instance, the clients, 
uh, the messaging again has to be different. So that there is a very clear definition and the messaging and the specificity. Likewise, for every aspect, every stakeholder, all of it is defined and we are in the era of stakeholder management. I remember Blackstone letter 20, I think January uh, 2020, when the whole concept of ESG and came in and the Blackstone CEO wrote that letter. So that changed the whole dynamic and we are living in that era of st stakeholder management and that is where st uh, public affairs takes the center stage. So that is what I want to say. Okay, thank you. I'm fe really feeling hot. I don't know because of the light or the he he you know, heated discussion here. And as me and uh, you know, Anupa and I was discussing, uh, the debate should be better and uh, uh, it, it, you know really, really charged up more than Donald Trump and Kamala, uh, Kamala Harris is what we decided. Mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly what we are doing. Can I add uh, to that? Yes, please. So, um, you know, you may have a great reputation, but if you do not have a favorable regulatory environment or favorable policy framework, I don't think the business will sustain. And I'm, I'm saying that from my experience where, you know, I worked in a company which had a great reputation, um, did, taught, did a lot of storytelling, there was a lot of positive sur surround sound, but ultimately the business quit India because the policy wasn't favorable. The regulations were not favorable to that company. So I, so I strongly feel that if the regulatory framework, we're not able to navigate through the landscape, the challenges of regulations, you will get stuck. It's not a sustainable business um, or, or an environment to work in. And day in and day out, that's why, you know, freedom to operate, freedom to grow is what, on the premise of which public affairs stands. And day in and day out, what we generally we do is all about that, creating that continue, continuously, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, the, yeah. so the continuity in both the cases, I would say, uh, thank you for that, uh, Sunita. But, uh, you know, uh, we have a question also from the audience here that uh, PR, PA, public affairs, claim to be grassroots driven when often funded by large organizational lobbyists. Okay, this is interesting. On the other hand, PR claims to represent the, just the public interest when its primary goal is to promote a client's or organization's agenda. You know, not that broad. How do you reconcile the potential conflict between... Uh, PR's emphasis on reputation and PR's focus on policy. I would go to Aman. So, um, grassroots lobby. Um, uh, can you please repeat yeah, your question sure. once again? So, PA because claims to be long. public affairs claims yeah. to be grassroots driven. Okay, when often funded by large organizations or lobbyists. Uh, on the other hand, PR claims you claim to represent the public interest when its primary goal is to promote a client's or organization's agenda? See, that's not necessarily true. Uh, and I can speak for PR. And in fact, for PA also, what is said it may not be 100% true because it's not necessarily grassroots driven. So coming to the PR part, basically, it's not necessarily the organizational agenda that you're pushing out in the market. There's a lot of policy communication work that happens, and that happens under PR. And that is where, you know, industries basically engage, uh, you know, PR as a tool or, you know, as agencies. And uh, see, you know, you have to actually understand PR more holistically and more strategically, okay? And when it comes to public relations per se, it can do a lot of stuff. It can actually promote a product, it can promote an organization, it can promote an individual, it can promote an idea, it can promote a philosophy, it can promote an industry. It can do a lot of stuff. So, um, you know, when it comes to PR, I think uh, it's not restricted to just the organization or uh, a, a particular uh, person, but, you know, it actually uh, strategically used, it can actually um, help every kind of public or every uh, kind of organization that it, it, it is in. Okay. Court. I think the okay. question is, make the, it's public policy rather than public affairs. Public That's affairs. Yeah, so, but so, it is okay. again overlap. It's again, uh, it's overlap. So the way you are defining it, um, uh, it's not correct. Because public uh, affairs is not lobbying. It might be a portion of it, but it's not lobbying. And why I'm saying this, uh, because there are a lot many uh, activity or uh, 
work the public affairs team does. Uh, also keep in mind, if you are looking even from policy and regulatory point of view, then also I can prove that it's much more. And let me put it. Regulation is for today to employees, to all the partners, to all the customer, to citizen broadly, to nation, relevance to nation. Those are the regulatory impact. And for any, if you're narrowly defining it, even then public affairs means addressing all these. Okay, and the moment you address all these, if your employees are, suppose women are coming, uh, working after eight, it's highly regulated, right? How you will treat your, how you will behave with citizen broadly, even if they are not your customer, everywhere you look at, there is a regulation. So even if you're narrow, um, narrow def definition also makes it so wide that public affairs means everything, the way you communicate also. That's also regulated because you can't have fake uh, uh, advertisement and there are not now. Drug and Cosmetic Act, long back, clearly defines that you cannot have, you cannot claim magical things. So what I'm saying is, even if you d narrowly define it, the impact is huge. And, and you cannot, uh, you have to be responsible company in a public affairs space. Both are uh, you know, subjects where I think we cannot measure it in a very tangible way. I honestly feel it's intangible in most cases, but both are uh, uh, really, really impactful and both are definitely uh, very ne uh, necessary. Now, you know, we had some sessions about uh, crisis uh, communication in the you know, pre-lunch, we had some sessions. Now, when it comes to crisis, now forget the debate, I just want to know, we know PR role, uh, uh, what they would do. How can they be an integral part to align with uh, a corporate, uh, I'm sorry, public affairs uh, people? Or is it possible or absolutely not? I would like first, uh, Aman, if you can just ask. No, then I'll come to Sunita or I'll, I'll come to... I think uh, because Rohan. I think uh, the question is in such a way, I think they should start first. Uh, no, you start first. Um, so I think I think. Let I me won't give you time to think. Let me let me make a few points first. Then I think I'm going to come to this question. I think uh, Rahul said that, you know, himself said that public policy comes far later. I think initially the communication is the genesis of a business. You know, be it being used for business communication, be it being used for consumer communication, or be it for any other stakeholder communication. And somewhere you will see a CEO is himself kind of a fantastic public relations professional, number one. Number two, I think uh, when Sunita was saying that, you know, uh, for a company, she was giving an example, uh, that, you know, how this company couldn't do well, despite having a great reputation. And I feel maybe the public policy people did do the great job, and you herself said that, actually the reputation people did a fantastic job. You know, they did the job, what they were tasked with. Uh, number three, again, I think it's, I think every time we've been repeating that uh, PR is about you know, driving client's agenda. It's not client's agenda. Actually, it's about brand advocacy. It's more about consumer awareness. It's, it's more about business awareness. And how does, it, how does each of the stakeholder benefits from that business? Uh, coming to the whole term public policy, I feel uh, public policy or you know, we say public affairs, I feel a better word is policy communications and relations. And again, like relations comes everywhere and communication comes everywhere. Uh, I think now I'll come back to the question you were saying. If you can repeat me again, yeah. I will answer. At time that. of crisis. Uh, see, at the time of crisis, both work hand in hand. Uh, I don't think uh, a public policy department can work individually. I think there are, even not like it's, it's legal department, everyone is involved. And I think everyone in this particular room would have kind of collaborated and everyone has a task to achieve kind of update to the central person and kind of you know you're trying, trying to take decisions so uh, I think uh, it's a coexisting decision but yeah I think because we manage external relations uh, you know what comes in the media kind of triggers debate can tarnish brand value so I think you know you are at much more front foot front forefront and I think what you advise 
uh, kind of has larger repercussions? I think, see, both has their SOPs, both has uh, their uh, individual framework, and they have their respective stakeholders and approach. Now, we, if we come to approach and method, is uh, public affairs more method-driven, or you think that public relation, they have a complete method in place and they uh, go by that, or you think your uh, uh, you know, topic, your uh, public uh, affairs is more method driven and you have to stringently follow that. There is no really any, uh, I would say, opportunity to, uh, like for PR at times it happens that you play by the ear. What about you? So, uh, in one sentence, I would say that I think the methods and communication channels in PR are more visible. So, you feel the structure, right? But in public affairs, it's not like that. You know, the methods and the communication channels could differ based on the situation, based on what, what is the agenda, what, what kind of fight you are leading, and who are your stakeholders. So the approaches could vary. There is no cookie cutter approach to public affairs. But the, as I said, the methods and channels are more visible in PR, and therefore they say that it's more structured, but again, you have something also to add has to it? its own. You have something to add to it, Rahul? Yeah. So I'll just give you an example. Uh, I work in a law, a law firm. We have uh, 19 service lines. We work across uh, I don't know how many sectors, every sector, very similar to Big Four. And uh, so every sector has a different regulator. Uh, every service line would typically have one or more regulators. A different kind of uh, judiciary or uh, regulatory system. Uh, different kind of stakeholders across hierarchy uh, and what has to be said to who has to be clearly stated. So this is just the regulatory side. Then the client side and what are the client requirements are different. So everything needs to be very, very clearly identified, discussed, what has to be said to who in what manner. And then it has to harmoniously work together. There has to be a practice level alignment and then at the firm level alignment. So when you're working at a uh, in a public affairs scenario, it has to work together in a very seamless manner. So it needs far more planning. A very a subset of it is actually PR, which kind of flows, which is more dynamic and as in something happens and then you respond and react and whatever is the side. And planning a, is. A I don't think that is PR. true. So I'm we, going yes, to come in over here you. because I've been waiting really long to jump in. <laughs> You know, crisis and issues management is not only at the time that a crisis, crisis hits a company or there is an issue. When you do crisis and issues management, a broad part of our time is actually taken into studying and preparing organizations with their protocols, trying to identify people, understanding risks, vulnerabilities that exist within an organization across functions, across verticals, etc. So there is a large part that we play in crisis preparedness planning. Exactly. Yeah? And when you do that, you work across every faction of an organization, right from understanding who are the people that welcome you at the factory floor, or who are the people that work in your IT, or in your finance department, or the public affairs team to understand what business challenges could come from regulatory risks that could exist in a marketplace out there. So, crisis pre preparedness planning, and we're not the fly-by-night op operators that come in, you know, and say, oh, you have a problem, we're here to fix your problem. I'm sorry, that doesn't happen, that. right? That is, to you. So, uh, uh, thinking about that, uh, the, how to avoid the problem proactively, that's key. Whether, to be very honest, though I'm, I'm for public affairs, but I want to give credit to them also. Oh, wow. Because, because oh, wow. both are- both, both, uh, They are both, scoring brownies, don't forget. Yeah, that. no, I hit them. Two toys, so I don't want to anymore. Uh, so uh, both do, do the same. But what I want to really uh, talk about, to be very honest, and I'm I'm uh, in responding to Aman. He said both of us have to coexist. Actually, my my thought is something else. My thought is actually both of us are disrupted today. Both public relation, public affairs. And both of us are massively disrupted by technology. Okay. So, so it's not that who will doing a better job. We have to think in change scenario, how we can survive and do a better job. 
I okay. can I can go in detail, but let me stop here. Okay, I would come for your last words. Before that, the nation. Oh, sorry, the audience <laughs> wants to know. Not the nation. The yes. audience wants to know. Just raise up your hands. Wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I know. See, just see the excitement out there. Raise your hands for public relations. Debate your whole premise. I don't think public relations and public affairs can be distinguished from each other. Yeah, we'll just yes, come to no, that. No, I mean, let me finish this point. Because, uh, you know, we work as a team. Public policy and PR, I mean, if you have ever worked in an organization, and if you've been part of the business team and the leadership team, we work together. There's a very important part of PR, which is policy PR. And similarly, for government relations, you need PR support. Without PR support, you won't succeed. Similarly, to the, her point, if the regulatory framework is not supportive, no amount of PR will, will get you the desired business goal or functional goal. So this whole distinction is something I question, because it doesn't work like that in real life. Well, it is uh, PR and PA, they're in, it's just peaceful coexistence after, uh, you know, a married life of uh, 25 years. Sometimes very it's just, peaceless. It's, uh, just after a married life of 25 years, Sometimes peaceful coexistence. Sometimes very peaceless also. Yeah. So, uh, public affairs. In fact, just one thing I wanted to add here, Paruma. Uh, yesterday, actually, we were talking to prepare for today's debate. And this was the first point we talked about. And then we said... Okay, let us do the debate and towards the end, we will agree to this one. <laughs> you know what? Uh, PR people are not to tell out secrets. Huh? Yeah. Not good with there is no the secret here. The cat is out here. of the bag. There is no secret here, come on. No, I have, I have a out. very legal heavy uh, team on my right. Very legal heavy team. I balance it out on the right. Uh, <laughs> Okay, yes, correct. So, okay, just uh, coming back for your last words, I'll start with, uh, with Tabriz. So, as I said in my previous uh, remark, that it's actually, unfortunately, not peaceful coexistence. It's actually completely getting disrupted by technology. And that's why I feel for youngsters, when you are thinking of looking at the career, uh, Either wherever you are, uh, prepare yourself for the new onslaught of technology because technology, the whole, uh, I will give you some, some specific task which is completely disrupted. Uh, content creation, whether you are PR or PA, immaterial content creation is completely disrupted. When it comes to messaging, whether you are on this side of aisle or that side, because of technology is completely disrupted. If you are working on a specific issue, whether on this side of aisle or that side of aisle, you will move from issue-based work to value-based. Uh, 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 if you're looking at, and there will be huge challenge on productivity. Uh, expectation is in three to four years, productivity enhancement has to happen in this both sec both uh, sector, nothing less than 25, Very nice, said Tabriz, uh, if value-based more than issue-based, very yeah, nice. Yeah, 25 to 30 percent, productivity enhancement happens means that much job has to go, okay? What, as a youngster, what you will do on the skilling to the present job, you have to think clearly, act on that, but at the same time, you have to think what's coming. Nobody knows. When internet came, e-commerce was not there. So you have to then plan what is coming in future, okay? Futuristic planning. Yeah, futuristic okay, with planning. that, Tabris, I'm sorry, I have to just yeah. come to uh, Rahul, we are a bit short of time. Rahul, your last words? So there's a lot of what is in public view. There is maybe 10 times more in the backdrop. And that is what public affairs is all about. Likewise, the value or the proposition, it might be 100 rupees at the front. It might be maybe a lakh rupees in the back end when PA is dealing with something. Thank you, Rahul. Sunita. So uh, I mean, I want to leave behind a thought that you know there is no versus today. Your external stakeholder is your external stakeholder, whether it's media or it's government. And, you know, I would say there is no versus. We all coexist. There is no conflict. We are running with the same narrative. 
we have the same messaging, there is no cross purpose. So having done corporate affairs for, so, you know, for the last four years, um, I have a seat at the table. And obviously it's la largely because I have 50% of my uh, time is in government relations, is in stakeholder management, is in public affairs. But that doesn't matter. Ultimately, everybody is working towards one goal, that is to have a sustainable business. Excellent. Sustainability. Yes, Aman, to you. Last words. So, all goody-goody or some punches again? Uh, let the youngsters be energized and, and, and be really optimistic punches. towards both the profession. So, I basically, it's two, two points. One is the measurement. In fact, there's a lot of conversation about PR measurement. What about the measurement of public affairs people? I still don't know and I would like to be enlightened on that. And particularly from 2014 till now, uh, what has really happened in public affairs space and from the measurement viewpoint, I think that is uh, something which is uh, very important to be discussed and uh, people need to be enlightened on that. Uh, whereas uh, I think uh, PR, everybody is counting either the clips or the messaging uh, where all it has appeared, the um, ad value equivalent or the reach and all of that. And I think, um, you know, so I, I mean, that scrutiny is definitely there. It is more measurable. But having said that, um, there's no doubt that both have to coexist and work together in an organization. Thank you, Aman. Thank you so much. Suvi, over to you. Yeah, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Uh, you know, the headline of what drives communication results. Well, communication results aren't measured in regulatory success. They're measured in trust and reputation. And that's what public relations is all about. Oh, thank you. Ama? I'll just end with, you know, the future is all about are you AI plus one, AI plus two, AI plus three or not? Number one. And number two, do you have public intelligence? I think I'll coin the word this. I think it's going to be public intelligence in the future. It's all about stakeholder management. It's all about reputation, uh, you know, enhancing and sustaining the reputation of a company. It's all about business growth. And both the verticals definitely need to, whether, whether uh, they can be measured or not, tangible or intangible, both uh, are very important functions for any business in today's date. And that we are any which we are seeing. So, uh, you know, On both are concerned with shaping public opinion. Where do they differ? I'll just come, uh, just to two minutes. Focus. Public relation focuses on commercial goals, such as promoting companies, products, services, and image. Affairs focuses on political goals also, such as influencing policy in favor of a company, which is very, very important, at least in the Indian scenario. And why not international? Goals. Public relation aims to build and maintain a positive image for an organization. Public affairs aims to influence legislatures, politi uh, you know, uh, po politicians, public policyholders, government people. They are the regulators. The framework needs to be, uh, you know, uh, passed through. Methods. Public relations uses marketing uh, tools, tactics, such as building relationship with media. Public uh, affairs, they also need to, uh, uh, you know, work uh, greatly on relationship building, well-known, uh, with the well-known brands, well-known well uh, people, influencers, I would say. Public affairs uses methods of persuasion and research. They need to do a lot of research to, uh, uh, you know, derive to uh, whatever the strategy they want to uh, make. Uh, examples of responsibilities if we talk about, PR responsibilities include uh, many things which we know that we have been doing for years and all the youngsters they are also uh, doing. Public affairs responsibilities include communicating with the quote-unquote uh, 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 policy drivers, uh, uh, the influencers, the government people who are authority to uh, sanction uh, certain uh, you know the the the, the, uh, uh, the approvals based on that the fr framework then it can it is uh, built both are very very important function yes pr i would say uh, you know the advent of p uh, public affairs uh, was no uh, was not so uh, aggressively spoken as we are doing today mostly it was pr but now both the functions are working definitely hand in hand with an ultimate goal as sunita said for the betterment of an organization i have beautiful panels here there were no bloodsheds and they are such beautiful people that they decided they'll end this debate uh, agreeing to disagree 
uh, disagree and also uh, uh, they feel that they have concluded saying both the functions are very very important so bright prospect for all the youngsters here who are aiming to be a peer professional or a pa professional good evening to you all